Our guest is Mark Morano, publisher of Climate Depot, a climate skeptic website. I won't say it's a climate denial website because in fact, there is no such thing. We all agree that there is a climate and we all breathe the air and exhale the carbon dioxide. Nobody is a denier. There are plenty of climate skeptics, climate change skeptics out there. And Mark is one of the most eloquent of them. I've never seen him lose a debate. He is extremely well informed, but he now, like so many others, is threatened as a result of recent action by Google and YouTube. Let me quote from Axios right now. Google advertisers and publishers, as well as YouTube creators, will be prohibited from making ad revenue off content that contradicts, contradicts quote, well-established scientific consensus around the existence and causes of climate change, the company's ad team said in a statement. Mark Morano, does this threaten you? This absolutely not only threatens me, but anyone out there who wants a chorus of voices on scientific and policy matters. What the larger picture of what Google YouTube has done today is they're basically saying, we will only allow content that supports the state line. In other words, the party line, the government line. So what they've done here is if you don't agree, and they've already cited they're gonna be pulling in United Nations climate science experts and, it, and with that sort of a fact checking if, if you don't agree with the UN climate view or, you know, the Joe Bi the Biden administration view, the current favored view of the, the, of the, of the power in government, government in power, you will no longer be, you will be persona non grata at YouTube. Now, this is only about monetization. I have things, I'm not monetized, but I have a whole new series of videos out doing very well on YouTube called the Morano Minute, where I literally do one minute, they're infotainment. I try to be silly and informative. But this is a direct aim at any type of content like that by me and by any other climate skeptics. John Stossel has run afoul of this. He's doing a lawsuit against Facebook. He actually confronted and they responded, the fact checkers. And the fact checkers admitted that their fact check had no validity. So John Stossel has these in emails. He's going to court. I don't know how successful courts are. I think, frankly, Doug, our founding fathers may have failed us because courts are not stepping up, Supreme Court, other courts, when it comes to a whole host of issues we're facing now. I'm just, I've been yeah, that, that's constantly a, disappointed in the court system. Well, absolutely. And a lot of people make the claim that they're becoming highly politicized. And if you look at the court picks that are going on in Congress now, whether it's Republicans or Democrats, they have to meet a certain test, a political test. And so anyway, that's, that's a story for another day. But you do mention that they are referring, and I'll, let me quote again um, uh, from... Uh, Google and YouTube, the statement, the company says that it is consulted with experts like representatives of the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change Assessment to create the policy. You've been a frequent critic of that body saying that they use misinformation. Yes. In fact, I've done whole, I worked with the United States Senate Environment and Public Works Committee. We had scientists who turned against the United Nations. UN scientists come testify. We've done reports profiling all the scientists. This is an organization that's a self-interested lobbying organization. It's formed in 1988. Its goal is to find CO2 driving cl a climate crisis. If it fails to find that, it fails to have a reason to exist. And by the way, as a bonus, the United Nations Climate Panel gets to be in charge of the climate solutions, which it, it, it finds. So in other words, they get to hype a crisis and they get to be in charge of the solution and host UN conferences all around the world this year in Scotland, which I'll be attending in, in, in the first week of November, 2021. So what they've done here, it's a deferral to consensus. Now, Michael Crichton, the great author of State of Fear, actually says consensus is not science. If someone is promoting a consensus, it's a way they can avoid debate and dissent. This is not science. The greatest scientists in history, according to Crichton, were great because they defied consensus. And today, you know, yes. You know, to, the, to that point, I was just thinking of, of the great peer of Albert Einstein, who died in 2020, Freeman Dyson, Freeman Dyson. Um, a physicist. Uh, uh, who who died last year? I said, and and was uh, not not a denier, but a skeptic of climate change. He he, he felt that that the production of CO two, which everybody acknowledges is in greater quantity now than it was maybe a couple of decades ago, is not necessarily bad. It may be beneficial. I'm looking at the trees behind you in the scene. There. He says yeah. that forestation has uh, reached levels that's never been before in history because. Uh, it's accelerating agricultural growth. Uh, yeah, and, and he was considered to be a quack 
by so-called the establishment, by that 97 percent consensus. He was. I mean, in fact, you know, NASA studies show the greening of the earth, show deserts are shrinking. And what the thing is, the climate activists spin that, Doug, they'll say, well, we're going to have more invasive species and, and poison ivy because of rising CO2. Yeah, you might get that, but you're also going to get the greening of planet Earth. And we're seeing it with agricultural production booming. But here's the bottom line. Google and YouTube, face they've already banned Robert F. Kennedy Jr., Joseph McCullough for COVID, for vaccine stuff. They started out, you know, shadow banning and, 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 and essentially, you know, repressing. And then they just got rid of it. Let's make no mistake. This is not a against monetization of climate denial, according to Google. This is the first step, not even of a thousand cuts, because I think it's only going to be about five cuts before they get there, to just banning any dissent on climate change from their platforms. Complete. We've seen this. In academia, uh, you know, I, I've interviewed Judith Curry. I've interviewed uh, multiple scientists. I have, I have a whole chapter in my book and movie all on the scientists who, once they speak out, they get essentially deplatformed, defunded, and they lose their jobs at university. We had Joanne Simpson, the first woman PhD meteorologist in the country, worked for NASA for decades. That she retires from NASA. She'd been the first woman PhD meteorologist in the United States. She retires. Her opening line is now. I, now that I'm retired, I can finally say it. I'm a climate skeptic. That's the kind of pressure put to build the consensus that Google says we must all bow to. And that's also happening, as I mentioned, EPA. All the scientists on the scientific advisory board who disagreed with anything the Biden administration is doing, about 50, were literally purged. So now you're going to have 100 percent consensus by EPA science advisory boards as they shut down American energy industry. It, yeah. It, also, it, yeah. It, it yeah. is not science if it if it gets rid of dissent. It, it's just that yeah. simple. Um, I, I want to always, the, the devil is going to be in the details with these kinds yeah. of policies. And I don't want to read again from the statement from Google and YouTube. This includes content. Their this criteria is based upon this. This includes content referring to climate change as a hoax or a scam, claims denying that long-term trends show that global climate is warming, and claims denying that greenhouse gas emissions or human activity contribute to climate change. That encompasses a whole variety of thought. Yes, and it's all how it's interpreted. Now, all climate skeptics would tell you, yes, humans can both cool and warm the climate. CO2 is a greenhouse gas. It's overwhelmed by hundreds of other factors. You can't distinguish. There's all sorts of ways to analyze it. Since 1850, we put thermometers. Yes, we've warmed. Since the medieval warm period, we're probably about the same or maybe cooled. Since the Roman warming period of about zero AD, we've probably cooled. And I have peer-reviewed studies to back that up. Now, you look at the larger picture, that's a meaningless statement that Google YouTube made because we are in the 10% coldest period of the earth geologically. So if you look at since the history of the earth, have we warmed or cooled? We've cooled. 90% of Earth's history has been too warm for ice at either pole. So when Google does this and they announce this, they're basically saying, we're going to defer to a bunch of rubber stamp fact checkers, which are going to do our bidding, shut all the, all, the, all the unpleasant content down. We saw this on lockdown. We have uh, a Nobel Prize winning uh, epidemiologist uninvited to scientific conferences because he didn't support political lockdowns. We have Google, YouTube, Facebook saying, if you post information in opposition of the World Health Organization, it will be labeled misinformation. You will be shut down. You will be shadow banned or whatever the phrase they want to use. So we saw this in COVID. One week you could say, the, uh, um, you could not say that the virus came from a lab in Wuhan. A week later, you were allowed to say it. But it all depended on what those in power indicated was true or not, because big tech is colluding. We know they're colluding with the Biden administration. The Biden administration, Doug, has been so helpful as giving out the names of people. I think it was about 12 names. Hey, big tech working with us so closely. These are who you should be banning. And guess what? They dutifully banned it and included people like Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and others. So don't make no mistake. This is not a private company. This is not, oh, they can make their own decisions. This is big tech colluding with federal government and global, you know, global uh, powers as well. Oh, World yeah. Health Organization, United Nations yeah. to essentially d crush any dissent. And this is their dream. And the people say, well, why are they doing this? Tom Friedman, New York Times, praised China's one-party rule, specifically on climate. They can do what's right. They can get things done. Christine, Christiana Figueres, a former UN climate chief, praised China for doing it right on climate. 
They have for decades loved the one party rule with no dissent. Guess what? April 2020 gave the progressive left their dream, which they had been publicly advocating for decades. It brought Chinese style social credit system and Chinese style repression and censorship to the once free yeah. West. That's why they love this. This is straight out of the Chinese playbook. You are not allowed to say anything that disagrees with official government positions. And Mark, on that note, we need to wrap it up. I am very curious to see whether Google and YouTube ban Al Gore for his predictions some decades ago that That's the right. polar ice caps would be ice free at this point in time. Very wrong, misinformation. I wonder if he will be banned. And I also wonder if you will be banned. So please check back with us uh, next month because that's when this policy takes effect. We want to see what it does to you. Thanks very much for your time. Mark Thank Rana. you so much. Thank you, Doug. Appreciate it.